Have you ever been laning in either top or mid lane, and you're up against an Aurelia matchup? You think that you're going to be able to deal with her, but then this champion, this high mobility, high sustain, high damage, pseudo tanky dancing champ of destruction, absolutely blows you up, and then of course, heals all her health bar back on the wave. And then you say to yourself, what in the world was that? How is that even allowed? What is that champ? In your disgust, you go to check her win rate after the game, and you tell yourself that there is no way she doesn't have a 55% win rate right now. She is completely broken, did you see what happened? And then, you look at this. How can that be? For a champion that is super oppressive, feels impossible to 1v1, and can hard carry games all by herself, to have one of the worst win rates in the game? It doesn't seem to make any sense. This can happen in League of Legends a lot more than you might think, as some of the best champions in the game can also be very difficult to play. What is so interesting is that in League, there's so much user error that can happen. Even if a champion is supposed to be really good in the meta, it doesn't always translate to free wins. Oftentimes, a B or an A tier champion is a lot better and more effective consistently over the long term than an S tier one, simply if that S tier champion is hard to play. I believe that we can all agree though that despite her win rate, Aurelia is a strong champion. So what about a similar case? Today, I'd like to talk about not one of the worst win rates in the game, but the absolute worst, Rise. Today's video is brought to you by Buff. Buff is an authorized app for Overwolf, which I'm sure that you've heard of. It's completely safe and easy to use as a way to earn free stuff for playing your favorite games. They have challenges that you can complete on a bunch of different games like League, Valorant, Fortnite, Dota 2, and many more. You can stack up Buff coins just by playing. All you have to do is let it run in the background and it won't affect anything gameplay wise, no frame drops or PC slowdowns. And then you can earn Buff coins, which will help you purchase Steam cards, Riot points, game game keys, hardware, and a bunch of other stuff. Like I said, super easy and safe to use, and I've been using it myself to get my favorite skins in League. You can join Buff for free today by clicking my link in the description down below. I'm going to tell you something that is probably not a secret for you. Rise is difficult to balance. Yeah, I know. Evident by his six, yes, six major reworks that he has received, including mini reworks and balance changes galore, he is easily the most changed champion of all time. There's not one main reason that he constantly gets reworked, but most players have speculated the main issue is his core gameplay identity. Ryze is a battle mage, which means he's somewhere in between being a burst mage or also a DPS, but not quite either of them exactly. He's a short to medium range mage that relies on machine gunning his opponents down with tons of abilities. Something about that ability spam, as well as the fact that he scales with his mana, has never really settled well into the League of Legends meta. No matter how many reworks, no matter how many times they try to get him right, they seemingly just can't do it. Either he will scale too well with his mana, allowing him to build tanky items like Frozen Heart and Rod of Ages, yet still do damage, which obviously isn't healthy, or maybe his mana scaling is on the weaker side and it feels like it doesn't matter. Even with his struggles to become a balanced champion that they don't need to touch anymore, he has always dominated the professional scene while being a little bit abysmal for solo queue. The discrepancy between pros and elite level play versus the average player on Rise is massive. Difficult champions historically like Azir, Callista, and Nidalee have been known to cause this problem for Riot, but Rise is different. He embodies the problem. He sort of exemplifies why this is a huge issue. In 2019, Rise was reworked for his sixth time, and we haven't seen him dominate pro play like we normally expect from him. He has still been picked here and there, just not the same. This rework on patch 9.12 would remove the shield on his Q passive and the automatic root on his W. Nowadays, in order to get the root on Rise, you have to press EW, and in compensation for these massive nerfs, the rework would give him a little bit more damage. At each rank of his ultimate for level 6, 11, and 16, he now gets increased damage on his overload pop if the enemy has an E mark. 
The nerfs to his survivability and lack of a shield would end up changing his playstyle. His now one shining light is that he can spam his EQ and blow enemies up. He's also a little easier to play with this iteration since his combos are not as important anymore because again, most of what you do on Rise now is just spam EQ. For this season in particular, Rise has not been the strongest. His core item that he built for over 10 years, Rod of Ages, was officially removed from the game, and with no Rod of Ages, Riftmaker would become its replacement. The only issue with Riftmaker is that it's way better for champions like Mordekaiser because it doesn't give any mana. Rise simply cannot spec into a mythic that doesn't have any mana. On top of that, his favorite item, Archangels, was a little undertuned to start the year. It ended up receiving two buffs, one on 1024 and again on 11.1, .1, and is now in a better spot. The lack of Rod of Ages means that Ryze must opt for a squishier build. The three mage mythic items that he can build do pretty well for him. Leandris is probably the least impactful of the three since he doesn't make full use of the damage, but the mythic passive does give ability haste, which he does like. Since Riot has spent a lot of this season buffing Everfrost, it's now not just good on Rise, but most AP champions as well. The additional root does give him a lot of good kiting potential as well as chasing, and it gives a little bit of health making up for the fact that he doesn't have Rod of Ages. As for direct Rise changes, he has received nothing but buffs for quite a while. On 10.6, he received some mana regeneration growth as well as some base damage on his Rune Prism. On 10.8, some more base stats as well as overload bonus movement speed increased. On 10.13, again, more base stats. On 10.20, overload base damage increased. On 11.1, .1, his main damaging ability that he maxes first now, which is his Q, again, mana cost lowered from 40 at all ranks, now 40 scaling down to 32. With all of these little buffs here and there, why is Ryze still sitting at the worst win rate in the game? What is causing him to be so pathetically low, even for his Ryze standards? I'm definitely not saying that we expect him to have a 50% win rate, but surely he's better than this, right? Well, I set out on a quest to find out. Some of you may know that I am a longtime Rise enthusiast. I absolutely love this champion, and across seven years of playing this game, I have around three or four hundred games of Rise, and I'm not entirely convinced that he's in one of his worst spots ever. I was determined to figure out what makes him good, what are his strengths that can help you hard carry games, as well as what are his weaknesses that make you lose games so bad that you contribute to the terrible win rate. After my little Rise experiment, I picked up on a couple of key notes. The first and most important is that Rise's playstyle for a very long time now has been different from what veteran players think he's supposed to be. We often like to associate Rise with items like Frozen Heart, and in fact, Frozen Heart is being buffed on 11.11 .11 here. But unless they are literally a 5 AD team, I don't think Frozen Heart is a good Rise item. He is far more of a burst mage with a little bit longer cooldowns these days. Your job is to blow up anyone who walks in your medium range. You have a few ways to do this, but the main goal for Rise now should be to build as much AP as possible. Firstly, with your EQ, you need to be looking to one-shot squishy champions, which, with enough AP, is entirely possible. Your biggest disadvantage is the lack of range and defensive tools without a shield anymore. You simply cannot deal with enemy threats jumping on you. This would force Ryze to build squishier, so you don't really have a choice but to steer into the skid. Not away from it. Recently, Death Cap had its cost reduced, and it's a core Ryze item. Under all circumstances, you should be looking to build Death Cap 3rd or 4th. The cool thing about Ryze is that he gets a lot more value out of Death Cap than some of the other AP champions in the game because of his passive. His passive grants him bonus mana based on his AP. The actual numbers are per 100 AP, he will get 5% more mana. This is huge for him, as each one of his abilities scale with AP and bonus mana. The amount of damage gained from your Mythic into Archangels into Death Cap is nearly impossible to pass up, and sometimes make me wonder, even if I'm playing against a full AD team, if I should just skip Zhonya's and go right for the Death Cap. Because your root is not guaranteed anymore, it's also not feasible to play Ryze unless you can kill somebody without your absolute max damage combo. Let me explain. In order to root someone, you must press E then W, which is totally fine and does allow you to pop your runes, gaining some movement speed as well if you press Q, but the amount of damage lost by not being able to press EQ is huge. However, after three items with the glass cannon build, you can either Q, E, W, Q, or even just E, W, Q and nearly kill them inside the root. 
By building so much more AP, you give yourself the chance to have insane farming numbers. You can clear ways faster, as well as jungle camps. And in fact, there's a league meme based around Ryze's farming. Doin B Rise Hack. I was like really, really strong this game, so I really wanted to invade as many camps as possible. And I think that sometimes it went a bit too far. I was trying to do the Doin B Hack CS, but it didn't really work out, unfortunately. <laughs> This all started after Doin B, the Season 9 World Champion mid laner, did something which seems nearly impossible. In solo queue, he got 400 CS at only 24 minutes. Everyone started memeing on this after there were YouTube videos and titles, probably trying to clickbait people, calling it a Doin B rise hack, using Chinese writing as well, making you probably think that he was cheating because you don't understand what it says. And then in reality, if you watch the gameplay, his jungler did let him take nearly all of his camps and blue buffs and he just kept farming over and over again. Regardless, it was still very impressive, and just because this was an extreme outlier doesn't mean we can't learn from it. A better example of how you can realistically apply it to your gameplay is by looking at a game that Midbeast did a nice review on. In this game, he showed us all how Doin B gets 10 CS per minute on Rise. If you want to play this champ, it is mandatory that you farm well and efficiently use your EQ to push waves and minions as well as take jungle camps. Hopefully you can be fed enough to take enemy camps and not always your own junglers. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't take your own jungler's camps because he's probably trolling and it's probably a huge jungle diff, but hey, you, you didn't hear it from me, man. Anyway, with such a potent farmer like Ryze, you need to really try to get 8 CS per minute or more. If you can't hit that number consistently, you simply are not able to utilize one of his big strengths. As stated earlier, the build that I preferred the most was Ludens first, but there really is merit for the other options. The biggest drawback compared to going Everfrost is not necessarily the loss of the active, but rather the health. What I do like about Ludens though is the mini phase rush that you get on proc. On patch 11.6, Ludens was given a small buff that reduces the cooldown when you hit enemy champions, and for a champion like Ryze, who wants to throw a lot of spells at the enemy, that's perfect. The wave clear that it gives plays into the idea of getting more CS, and you're likely to build on Ryze either lucidity boots or defensive boots like mercs or tabbies, so it means that you can't go for sorks. Having no flat pen whatsoever on mages feels really bad, so Ludens helps to fix that problem. It gives 6 flat pen once you get it, as well as the mythic passive, giving you an additional 5 per item. For full transparency, the pros have adopted the Everfrost setup and seem to prefer it substantially, so you should probably trust their judgement more than mine. As I said, Everfrost is definitely good. And after your mythic, just go ahead and complete that Archangels, then Deathcap or Void situationally depending on which one you need first, and then again a situational defensive item or utility. Things like Cosmic Drive, Rylai, Zhonya's, Banshees, or even QSS all work well for Rise. Is this build going to be squishy? Yes, very squishy. Is it harder to position? Yeah, it definitely is. But after testing, I think it's the only way to carry games in solo queue. For your rune page, phase rush is still the go-to keystone. While it did get nerfed on the previous patch, the thing about these phase rush changes is that they only affect the early game. The cooldown was buffed come late game. This does hurt during the early game when you need to escape ganks or run someone down in the jungle, but I don't think you mind it too bad on Ryze, given that he can already kite around more and more when it scales up, so that's when it matters most anyway. So far this season, we have seen Ryze holding up decently well in professional play, not as broken or overtuned as previous seasons where he was widely picked, but not his worst either. We've seen 201 bans total across all regions, as well as 289 picks, with a presence of 15%. Of course, if you only sort by top 5 regions, he's picked quite a bit less, but that's just because there's less games total, he holds a very similar presence in those as well. As for pros who have performed well on him, you should look no further than Caps. Caps has played Ryze three times this season, and he won all three of those games. His best performance came against Astralis, where he did opt for the Ludens in full AP setup, as he showed us that in the right situation, Ryze can still destroy the pro level. I think what I wanted to try to find out the most in this investigation for Ryze is simply did anything change for him? Is any of this different than his usual? At this point, I think we know that his solo queue win rate is going to be bad, we know that he can still do well in pro play, and we know that he is probably going to get reworked again next week. So did I find anything deeper here? I think to some degree, yeah, I did. I don't think that Ryze is top tier, that would be absurd to even hint at, but I don't believe he's the worst champion in the game either, especially for solo queue. 
Despite his bad win rate, you can make him work decently well, you just have to take the correct steps. I recommend banning Zed, um, <clears throat> not that I would, you know, know anything about that, or, or anything, you know. You should probably build full AP or nearly full AP. Don't be afraid to move into the enemy jungle to take camps. Be a little selfish by stealing blue buffs and asking for them from your jungler, and focus on side laning no different than a Trindamir or Fiora would. You seriously have a good win condition with him. Almost no other champions can match his mid-range DPS and burst come late game. Although nerfed, he still technically has completely point and click CC, and you can still shove waves and contest jungle fights if you need to early game. Just be very careful with your mana conservation. Wave clear is never a problem for him, and he is easier to play now than he used to be in the past, since EQ spam is really easy to do. With everything that I have learned, I will give him a solid yet reasonable rating of B tier. He's not as OP in solo queue as Fiddlesticks, Shaco, Urgot, Shen, Talon, or Zed, and he's not played as much in pro play as Rumble, Morgana, Kaisa, or Leona, but he has a real place in this game in my opinion. Ryze main should not be too worried about his current state, especially since Riot has proven this season that they have no problem buffing him, they are willing to do so. But anyway, these are just my thoughts and feelings. Please feel free to let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree. How do you feel about Ryze right now? Do you even ever see him in solo queue? Because, you know, you, you probably don't. And if you enjoyed the content and the editing on these videos and would love to support me, please check out my Patreon. I have video editing tutorials on the Patreon, as well as a way to support the channel in general. I really do my best to try to release high quality content at a reasonable pace, so I hope that that shows. Anyway, thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time.